Today's Captain's Blog is made possible by a grant from Brandon Semensko. Thank you, sir, for getting involved and being a part of this. Welcome to the weird. Now, hang on. You got to hold it with your thumb here, your hand here, finger here, thumb here, like that, because those two holes are your microphones. Oh. Yeah. It's really easy to hold that and cover the microphone holes. People get really pissed off when they're watching the video and there's no sound. All right. So for them, we're going to cover this again because he says he wants to put this on YouTube, and you're going to use this to teach other guys here, aren't you? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So you got a mop. We tell you how to clean the mop up. Make sure, make sure your mop's clean. Right. And this has like plastic and crap in it. And this is like the worst mop in America. This is like a little toy. We've got an industrial set up here. This is a residential mop, so it kind of sucks to this. But, okay, here's the basics for how to mop the floor. You need two buckets, a ringer, and a mop. Fundamentally, you need that to do this right. One bucket is clean water. That's it. Put a little soap in it, but not a lot. You don't need to empty half a thing of dish soap into it. Just, you're fine, okay? And for a bucket that size, a good tablespoon of soap is plenty, like more than you need. This, you need to have it empty. This has to be clean. You're set. This is reasonably clean enough. Here's how you mop the floor. Dip the mop. Drop the mop. Okay? You go in an S pattern now. You got the surfer stance. This is the same stance you use for pressure washing a lot. Okay? You got the surfer stance, and you just working a back and forth. Like you're mowing a lawn. It's the same kind of pattern as if you're mowing a very tiny lawn. Okay? Then flip it over and go back. Did you see that smooth flip over move? That's, that's how you flip over your mouth. Okay? You work one side, then the other. This is a little toy mop, so it's really hard to do this and make it work right. Put it in here. Do not crush the top. Don't, don't do this. That's how some idiot broke it. Put that in there, squeeze it, get everything out that you can, which is really hard because this mop is too small for this thing, but it'll work. Then, back out here. And you're only going to work a small area at a time. This, this spot here, about you know, five feet by five feet, give or take, that's, that's your area for each round of mop. Flip it over, and go back. And notice, we only had to put down one thing of water, we spend most of our time taking water off the floor and putting it on. And the mop, the little fibers in the mop, will pick stuff up. Put this in here, squeeze it out, you're good. This is a technique for a smooth floor. This is an epoxy concrete floor, so it's nice and smooth. When you have to put your mop down, never set your mop in the dirty bucket. Set your mop up in the ringer, and a proper mop would actually sit in there. But yeah, that's how you do that. So the other thing we have to do down here is this. Now this is a textured rubberized floor. This is an orange peel floor. So a regular mopping technique won't work at all. I'm not talking to them, I'm talking to you because I'm teaching you how to do this because we're back to you now. We taught them and I'm going to Okay. This is orange peel. So what you have is lots of little crevices with dust and schmutz in them. And if you just mop it, you're just going to get them wet and it's going to go back down. Now the way to clean this, the best thing to do this would be pressure washing. Nothing compares. And man, you and I are going to rock out with a pressure washer one of these days. But we can't do that down here because there's computers everywhere, so we got to do things a little different. I'm going to show you how to clean one small spot and watch the difference. Now, this is, this is what the other guy did when he cleaned down here. He made this clean spot. That would be me. Okay. I wasn't going to name you by me. the name. I was trying to save you some pride. Okay. I was trying to be nice. That's a fantastic job Bill I did. Bill did this. And this is a good job. This is nice. Okay. But now it's my job to make Bill our bitch. So here's how you do this. What you need, so we're, we're not going to need this at all. Okay, we're just going to set this aside. That is not the tool for a textured floor. Okay, because we live in the future now. What you need is an acid brush. This is an acid brush. This yes. is what you use when you're etching a floor with citric acid. This is a brush you use for that. We're not going to be etching a floor with citric acid, though. We're going to Come over here. Now we just got a little brush, right? So this doesn't hold a lot of water. So you can't really get a big area wet with this. Except watch. That's what I used. Okay, start with that. 
You don't want to push so hard that your bristles bend over. You don't want that. You want to tickle it like this because you want the bristle getting down in there. Okay. Get a lot of water. Can't. Okay. Now I'd like to point out, did you put any soap in there at all? No. That's just water. Yeah. That's it. No expensive degreasers, cleaners, and this is what you can do with just water. Then you grab a shot back. And you say, Ed, put shot back in, please. Now there's a very specific technique for this. So get down, because we're gonna get into this. You got plugged in yet? Yep. schmutz in all yeah. the little gaps, okay? So his, his super clean floor is dirty as shit, okay? There's, there's like, look at that, see? That's bad. Now come on over here, look at my floor. Okay. You get, now it's different because it's still wet a little bit, but get right down in there. See how there's no shit in the little holes? Yeah. Yeah, so when this is done, it's gonna be about a thousand times cleaner his floor, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, see? That's how it's done. And now you know. Okay. So you do that, you do it a small area at a time. You just, whatever you're comfortable with. I do, like if I'm doing detail cleaning like this, I'll do a spot about this bit and just boom, 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 boom. And you just do it three at a time. It's tedious, it takes time. But by the time you make the lap around here, you're gonna be damn good at doing this. That's how it starts, I've done it. I did all this. I'm the guy that painted the floor. <laughs> that was me, okay, I didn't, I, I wasn't Ed. I epoxied that floor. There's a video. We actually did training videos down here on it. And you can learn how to do that. But before you can put that epoxy on, you gotta get all the other shit off. Because the epoxy, we have to etch the floor. The surface of the concrete is actually rough. Instead of smooth, polished concrete, we had to make it rough to do this. We had, there was tiles or carpet or something on here. I don't even remember. I think it was tiles and carpet. But I had to take all that off. And when there's no computers in the middle of the room down here, there's two secret things that appear, and it makes working things wet down here a lot easier. We were able to pressure wash this floor a lot, and we had to. We had to pressure wash the hell out of this because it had glue on it. There are... Still want me recording this, yeah. or are we good? Okay. There are, down here... Ah, there you go. Two floor drains. So when we worked this, we, we were able to dump hundreds of gallons of water down here with pressure washers now because there's, there's one here and there's one over there. So now you know how. Get your tunes on. Rock out. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Today's Captain's Blog is made possible by a grant from Brandon Semensko. Thank you, sir, for getting involved and being a part of this. Welcome to the weird.
Uh, don't pr now you're recording again. Now we got to get Ed. See now the whole world has to look at Ed. You know what? Post production will take that out. 